Divine Truth Assistance Group. These group assistance sessions are about putting principles of divine truth into action. This discussion is part of the 2014 Australia Group 1 series. Jesus gives a revision of previous days, filmed on the 17th of July 2014 in Monterey, New South Wales, Australia. All right, well, firstly, what I'm going to do is have a bit of a revision with you of the last the four days, because you've had a break, you've had time to forget it all. <laughs> and then the uh, next thing we will do after that is Cornelius will come up with you and revise your homework that Cornelius gave you regarding addictions. You remember that homework? It was two days ago. And it's about recognising addiction. So Corny will go through that with you. It will be quite rapid. He will go through that with you. And, uh, and today we're not discussing a lot of things with you. We're just getting your feedback, basically. Then we will have a, a break. And, and straight after the break, we'll be doing three fairly rapid personal truth sessions in a row. Does that make sense? And then after the personal truth sessions are finished, we'll possibly have another break. And then Mary will talk to you regarding the challenge, regarding the challenging addictions homework. You remember that homework? So we should talk to you about that. And then hopefully after that, we'll get to do two more personal truth sessions with you. So, so today is a fairly full program and, uh, and we hope to get all of those things done if we can. We'll see how we go. Just a brief thing we'd like to do first with you is to revise the days as you remember them. So let's go back to the very first day. What do you remember from the very first day? And if we have the microphone, so Shell, thanks. How we use our time and our will and our desire for truth. Right. So there were three things about whether you really do have a desire for growth or not. And it was how you use your time, how you use your will, and how much you personally live in truth right now in your day-to-day -day life. Right. And remember, I made a statement that if you really analyse things carefully, most of us would have to be honest and say, we don't really have a very strong desire. Right? Then Cornelius talked to you about why you don't have a strong desire. Can you remember the main three? There were three main reasons why you don't have a strong desire. What were those? Felix, if you come down. Why we're so afraid. Um. Uh, lack of faith in things like God or myself and um, uh, and um, uh, fear of being emotionally overwhelmed. So if we write down them as you go. So the first one was a lack of faith. Yeah. Uh, and the second one was the fear of being emotionally overwhelmed. overwhelmed. Yeah. So we, we don't want to become emotionally overwhelmed. And the third one was a fear of truth or... Um, was it fear of truth or...? A lack of desire for truth. Yeah, so, so it was a resistance to resistance truth, wasn't truth. it, that he uh, particularly highlighted, a resistance to truth. And the, right. the lack of faith, was that also lack of faith in truth as well? Yeah. It's a lack yeah. of faith, yeah, in yeah. everything to do that's with what God, I feel. Yeah. which includes yeah. truth, yeah. love even. Yeah. Most of us have a terrible lack of faith in love even. Yeah. The world's view of love basically is that it's a weak, insipid emotion that, that basically has no value. It can't overcome anything and it, des and it definitely cannot overcome evil. That's how, generally, that's how we generally view love in the world. Even though we're all trying to seek it, we often have some very terrible emotions about it. And uh, many of us have those emotions, of course, which are all a part of our lack of faith. Good. Oh, and then Mary talked to you about, can you remember that first day of what Mary talked to you about? Susan, thank you, just over here. The difference between will and willpower in growing the muscle to have 
uh, more strength in our will. Right, to do to what? Use it in, to use it in a loving, truthful, right. finding growth. So the theme of her talk was strengthening... Get to, so, uh, and the will to love. You know, you can strengthen your will to do a lot of other things, can't you? <laughs> well, many of us have done that, but it's strengthening our will to love. And in there, there was the discussion of the will versus the willpower. But before then, there was a discussion about love itself. Can you remember that discussion? What was the point of that? Thanks, Denise. That love governs everything? Yes, yeah, so everything is governed by love, actually. The entire universe, all of God's laws are all about love. So learning about love should be our first... Focus. Yeah, first purpose. And so this is something we need to do. Look, let's, let's look at... Edu the problem is we all lack an education, education, about love, don't we? And are we really focused on that education? And if we look again at the way we've used our time and the way we've used our will in the past, we haven't focused on an education about love. We've focused on an education about all sorts of other things, though, haven't we? Even right down to getting a university degree, four years of education on science, mathematics, you know, humanities or whatever other issue, but we don't focus on this issue of love. And it would be fantastic if we did. And then, of course, as you pointed out, Mary talked to you about the will, muscle, developing the muscle, if you like, to love, to, to actually, so that at the moment our muscle might be weak and insipid and we hardly ever use it, and what we want to do is build that up so that it's nice and strong. Okay, so that was the first day. What happened the next day? Can you remember what we talked about the next day? So if we come across to Louise, thanks. Um, was that about understanding self? The, Correct. Um, explored the real self, the facade self and the hurt self and talked about the 17 steps to deconstruct the facade self. That's correct. So we talked about self, the three selves basically, wasn't it? The, and remember this is all what we are as one person. There's a mixture of these three things in us. So the real, the... The hurt, I should put it at next probably, hurt, and the facade. We talked about the deconstruction process of any emotion that is out of harmony with love. So that deconstruction process applies to all emotions out of harmony with love, not just to your facade. And then uh, Mary talked to you a bit about feeling the hurt child. She gave you some pointers about how to do that, remember? And so we'll be covering the homework about that tomorrow. So some of the homework that you were given will be tomorrow. We'll discuss that. And then the next day, so remember, again, what you had the most trouble with there was that deconstruction process, wasn't it? That it sort of really was quite difficult. And then when Mary started focusing you on the hurt, there were also some difficulties in there as well. Although recognising the hurt is usually something that you do quite easily, feeling the hurt is something that you often avoid quite strongly. So you recognise the hurt, but actually feeling it and processing through it and releasing it, that's a different matter altogether. So the next day, what was the next day? Can you remember that? So if we go to Fab. It was addictions. So about addictions, yes. And um, Cornelius told us about how we can recognise our addictions. Correct. So there was firstly the discussion about recognition. Cog. Rec, rec, cog. And then Mary gave us that talk about that, about, chart, that chart behind there. Yeah, but so she introduced the concept of the addiction to you by, by this chart. And then... And then Corny talked about the recognition of the compulsion and the feelings associated with the addiction being met and not being met. Remember that? And he gave you some pointers too about codependence and other things like that. And then 
Mary got then up and talked about this part of it, didn't she? You remember that? The challenging of the addiction part. So there was the recognition of the addiction and then there was the challenge of the addiction. You remember that? Okay. And in the process, they gave you some homework and that is the homework they are going to discuss with you today. All right, so Karen? I don't understand the dotted lines that go from met and not met to challenge addiction. The dotted lines are the choice we have. So the, this is the path, the red, if I put a highlighter of red around the path, these are the paths that you normally take. You follow me? That's the path that you normally take. Yeah. And you normally do this, right? So this is the path that you normally take and this is the path you normally take on both sides of the equation. So those red highlighted paths that I've just highlighted, I don't want to make up the lovely diagram very, very much. That's what you would normally do. And the dotted lines are the things you could have done but chose not to. So they are the choices you could make. Instead of going in that direction, you could choose to notice the feeling and try to challenge it. Instead of going in that direction to get something met, you could notice the compulsion and try to challenge it. Instead of going in this direction, whenever things are not met, you could go notice the feeling and try to challenge it. But you choose not to. Yeah, so even sense. after you've met an addiction, you can still go that way. Correct. You have a choice at any point to challenge the addiction. Okay. What we're recommending if, is if you challenge it at the compulsion, you'll do far less damage than if you challenge it after it's been met or after you, you know, realise that it's not met. Okay. But, but at the end of the day, we want to challenge it and it doesn't really matter where we begin challenging it, we just need to challenge it. Thank you. Does that make sense? Yeah. So the reason why those lines have been done in a dotted line is that they are choices we could have made in harmony with love that we actually generally do not make. We just go back in this cycle, 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 cycle. That's what we do. So Mary and Corny will talk about that with you more today and, talk, and ask some questions about that. By the way, they're not going to spend a lot of time talking about new information about that. They're just going to ask you about your homework and generally make some comments about your homework. Does that make sense? Good night. Now, the last day that we had was about what? We come down to Barb. Repentance and forgiveness. Right. So, forgiveness and repentance, it's about? And unfortunately, we didn't get to cover all the information I would have liked to have shared you with you on that day, but we did at least get to cover quite some basic things about forgiveness and repentance. What, what was the main thing that you remember from that talk? If we come down to Nina. We need to look at those that have pro been the primary causes of our hurt. Correct. And forgive them. Correct. And then we need to repent for those we have harmed because we haven't forgiven those that hurt us. Correct. So, and remember, we had two diagrams that we placed on the board. One was the diagram about all the people that did actually do the hurt. And then we often compare that with the people who we think are hurting us, and it's a completely different group of people, right? And this is, this is a problem. We can't forgive a group of people that don't need our forgiveness. They need our repentance. And we can't repent. With, uh, sorry, we can't repent with people we need to forgive. So we, we've got these issues with regard to understanding repentance and forgiveness. Now, I am going to do the homework that I gave you for those sessions tomorrow. So that's when we're going to talk about that in far more detail. Does that make sense? So now we come to today. And what we want to do today is start helping you see what your own true opinions are about things. Does that make sense? So what we're hoping to do is that you are very frank and open about what your true opinions are, and this is what we would like 
Corny and Mary is, are both going to focus you on, and the reason why they gave you your homework was to help you focus on what do you really feel here, not what you would like to feel or what you, you think you would like to feel or what, what the right thing is to feel if you're on the path or any of those kind of things, but rather what is it that you really feel about a lot of these subjects? And that's what we'd like to discuss with you over the next two days. Because without you knowing what you really feel, you're not going to know where you're really at. You're going to think you're somewhere that you're not. And that's something that we need to correct. So, so what we're going to do now is invite Corny to come up and he's going to discuss with you the subject again of recognising your addictions, recognising in particular the feelings of addictions. He left you with three primary questions from memory. So what he's going to do now is he's going to go through those questions with you. So if you can get your homework out relating to the questions associated with recognising addictions. And Corning can come up and talk to you about that. <laughs> 